Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Nine Hacks for Custom Automation, hosted today by Aquizio and Hennepin Marketing. Uh, presenting today is Mark Poirier, the Executive Vice President and Co-Founder of Aquizio. He's got 17 years of experience in digital marketing. He's also a master fisherman, and he can be found on Twitter at Mark Poirier. And my name is Jeff Baum. Uh, I'm actually an Associate Director of Page Search at Hennepin Marketing. I blog at PPC Hero. Um, I, I've been a HeroCon speaker, and I could be found on Twitter at JeffBaum71. And I'm looking forward to presenting with Mark once again. We encourage you today to join the conversation with us. So just include the hashtag uh, ThinkPPC in your Twitter tweets, or just use the webinar question box to send us any questions. We encourage them, and we look forward to them. Okay. Now, so the first, we want to ask you a couple of questions. The first one is, uh, 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 how long have you been in PPC? Right, so you can answer at the hashtag, or uh, probably easier to answer right here. Uh, less than one year, one to three, three to five, or uh, you've been doing this forever, it seems, five plus years. So we'll wait <laughs> a few seconds until the answers come in. Great. So, Mark, uh, just a quick question for you. Now that we're starting to hit the holiday season, are you starting to see any uh, uptick in activity in the way that uh, advertisers are using Aquizio to to ramp up bids or budgets to take advantage? Yeah. yeah I think there uh, there's uh, the the, uh, the the every year is the same thing. People start freaking out. They're uh, preparing any testing and they're wrapping up. In fact, any tests, any new uh, functionality that they want to deploy, it's all being done right now. So this super active right now and then it's going to be super quiet <laughs> nobody yeah. wants to touch anything until the you know January 2nd or 3rd when they come back exactly uh, yeah. looking to lock yeah. things really, down really yeah. busy at the moment makes sense okay so we have our poll results in for the question how long have you been in PPC and uh, it's a pretty interesting split 36% uh, of you uh, have less than one year of experience uh, Thirty-one percent of you have one to three years experience, and seventeen percent have three to five years experience, and seventeen percent have five plus years experience. So we're sort of covering the gamut today. That's interesting. Huh? So that means that uh, all of you guys who are getting started, or you feel like you're uh, you starting to feel good about where you're at, we're going to throw a bunch of wrenches in your plans and give you some really cool uh, and more advanced techniques that you can start using to automate uh, things and hopefully improve results for yourself or for your customers. So second life poll uh, question, um, how do you manage your accounts? Uh, manage it myself, I'm part of a team that manages it, or I outsource my account management, or rethinking how my account is managed uh, at the moment. Again, you can answer uh, right there or with the hashtag uh, ThinkPPC. So that will also help us sort of guide how we speak to you in a few seconds. <laughs> Great. Yeah, Mark, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about uh, some of the new features that are coming out, especially like the call out extensions. Uh, it looks like we're, you know, adding a lot of interesting things to ads that are really going to help, I think, you know, throughout the holiday season and just going forward. So, you know, I think we're uh, yeah. moving into some exciting times, just tons of innovation going on. More extensions have more work for us as well. They just released it for the API, so that means uh, for us it's time time to start coding. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's lots, lots, lots of fun. That's right. It's coding. All right. Yeah. So uh, it's a good, good split. I think it's uh, oh, about 50-50, You know, out mm -hmm. the, oh no, actually, uh, most of the people manage their own stuff, and just a few of you uh, outsource it. So you hear more to to see what you can force your agency to do for you. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. So let's get started. Uh, Jeff. Okay, great. Well, the first uh, hack that I'm going to talk about today is scripts. So for everyone that's sort of new to the industry, I think you're going to find this uh, very interesting. So first of all, let's uh, spend a second and discuss what scripts are and what do they do. So basically, uh, scripts are just they're lines of Java code, and they, they're able to be used to automate large areas of your account activities. Uh, it comes in particularly handy if you have a large account. So for example, you want to manage your bids, your uh, 
uh, you need to automate reports or get alerts or pause ad copy. Uh, you can do all that just by running a script and having it execute it either once a day or once an hour, whatever you define it as. It allows you to uh, you know, be able to not have to do some of those manual things that just sort of take away time and kind of pull you away from working on strategy and whatnot. And in addition, there's other really cool things that scripts can do, which I'm going to show in the next couple of examples. Uh, scripts can be custom created. So if you have a Java developer and you have a special need, uh, they can write code and you can do very unique things. Or you can go out to a number of resources. You can grab some pre-made scripts and you can just sort of adjust them to what you need to do for your particular uh, uh, business. So uh, if, you, if Mark, if you can move on to the next slide, I'll start diving into some examples. Hmm. Mark, uh, there we go. Are okay. you not seeing the next slide? Okay, excellent. So the the first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there might be a little bit of a delay with the uh, the screens coming up, so just bear with us. So the first uh, script example that I'm going to talk about, and hopefully it's up on your screen now. Uh, that uh, there's a gen, um, Mark, the uh, screen advanced, uh, can we back up one? Great. So there's a site out there called freeedwardscripts.com that a, a gentleman named Russell Savage created. And what he does is he just puts uh, free scripts out there that you can uh, use and deploy in your accounts. So the first example that I wanted to show to you is just a simple, uh, it's called an in-stock, out-of-stock checker. So all this does is, is this script can tie into your inventory system. So let's just say that you have an e-commerce site. Uh, you can enable or pause your ads based on whether or not you have stock. So for example, if you're selling widgets, your ads are running and then the stock goes down to zero, the ads will automatically uh, pause for you. Um, if you're doing this uh, manually, there's a good chance that uh, the ads are not going to be in sync and are going to be running even after you're out of stock. So it's a great way to gain efficiency in your account and to uh, you know keep your return on ad spend and your ROI high by only see, only focusing on those products that you actually have available at the time. Next slide. Okay, and then in this example, this is a really interesting one that Russell came up with. These are ads that can either be paused or enabled based on airport delays. So essentially, the uh, FAA allows access into all the airline schedules throughout the entire United States. So let's uh, take an example. Uh, Mark, for example, spends half his life traveling. So Mark is in Atlanta and he uh, he gets delayed and he's looking for a restaurant while he's you know waiting for his uh, plane to come in. So as an advertiser, by hooking into that system, I can have specialized ads that come up that say, are you on a flight delay? Uh, you know, come to my restaurant, get 10 percent off. Or if I'm delayed overnight and I need a hotel room, I can have those ads that are ready to go as soon as we know that there's a delay or cancellation. So. Uh, this just highlights just the unique power that Scripps has to be able to uh, really customize messages for you. So uh, if you get the opportunity to use these scripts and there's uh, literally tens of thousands of scripts that are out there, I suggest uh, using them. I think you'll find them uh, very beneficial to you. And then in this slide, the, uh, the scripts reside uh, in in your AdWords interface by just clicking on bulk operations. And then what will happen is you'll see a little red button up on the top left hand corner. Uh, you just click on that and then that's where you'll actually enter your script in. And then this screen here is just sort of a summary screen. It'll tell you what scripts are running and when they're going to run and gives you the option of changing or creating schedules. So this is just for your information when you're looking at how to deploy those really cool uh, scripts where to put them in at. And then finally, just to wrap up uh, our conversation with scripts, there's a couple of uh, 
uh, resources for you to go to. One, you can go to freeedwardscripts.com and you can search out the types of scripts that are available. And then you can also go to Google to developers.google.com uh, slash Edward slash scripts. And not only will you get uh, pre-made scripts similar to free Edward scripts, there's also a lot of uh, implementation guides that kind of can guide you through how to uh, get scripts uh, set up in a way that are going to run efficiently in your account. Okay, the next hack that we're going to talk about today is creative testing automation. So th the question is, why would we even want to automate our creative testing? Well, from my experience, uh, I've seen that it's tedious. It's just, it takes a lot of effort to, to pull results. You have to go into your, uh, your accounts, whether it's Google, whether it's Bing, Facebook, or whatnot. You have to pull the results down. You got to get your, your clicks, your impressions, your conversions, uh, your cost per conversions and whatnot, and uh, compile all that data. Then there's the time drain associated with it with actually interpreting the results and deciding what do I do with these ads? Do I pause an ad? Do I delete an ad? Uh, we, you know, PPC moves along so quickly and we're always looking for a little bit of that time advantage. So, uh, you know, another reason for automating. And then finally, uh, simple old creativity. Uh, if you spend a lot of time in your accounts, uh, I know it happens to me, you tend to lose that creative perspective. You're just looking at the ads a certain way. You're looking at the account a certain way. And it's kind of hard to think of that next really interesting concept that's really going to take your your click throughs and your uh, conversions up to the next level. And then also a lot of people deal with kind of the left brain, right brain, creativity sort of issues. Uh, so uh, that's a, a, the main reasoning behind why we want to automate. And now we're going to talk about some ways that we can do that. So there's some automated ad platforms that are out there. So we're just going to share a couple examples in the industry. Uh, one company is called Boost Media, and they're very unique. So they have a specialized technology where they automate the testing process. So if you have an A-B ad, uh, they can test uh, statistical significance uh, for, for your ad copy, and then uh, not only can they interpret results and tell you what the winner is? They also have a platform of professional copywriters who will actually write the ad copy for you. So you can submit a request to have them write the copy. And if you like it, you can uh, use their copy and they've had really great results. So something uh, worth considering. The next platform we're gonna talk about is actually a Hannapin product called uh, uh, Hero Pro where uh, you can actually automate the creation of ad copies. So it can create up to 26 variations of ad copy. It'll automatically test it. You can even set your experiment, uh, you know, for what metric you want to test and how you want to test it. So a, a nice way to be able to, uh, you know, kind of give a little bit of that control over to, you know, to the system while you're monitoring results and tweaking along the way. Okay, the next platform is one that actually industry guru Brad Geddes uh, introduced uh, not too far back is a, a platform called Adalysis, which does uh, very similar to what the previous two products do. But again, it tests for uh, statistical significance. It tests for, uh, um, you know, it'll test an A-B ad or a, a multivariate test, and you can measure all those results. And I believe you can also create ads with that, too. I know that Mark is sort of familiar with the platform, too. So, Mark, I just want to see if you had any comments about it. Yeah, well, I've been talking to Brad about uh, how we can integrate this or offer it to, to our customers as well. Um, so, I have, yeah, I do have some insight. I'd say one of the it does all the things that we talked about, but one of the things that I think is more important uh, to, to outline is the, their ability to take an ad across a large number of ad groups and to compile the data across all of these ad groups um, in order to gain uh, confidence rapidly in the test result, to, see, to, to know that uh, this ad is better than that ad uh, within a few hours or maybe a day rather than wait, you know, 
three months, <laughs> which uh, is no good. You know, I mean, you need to iterate quickly to gain uh, some some insights into how things are going. So depending on how accounts are structured, when you have uh, a large number of ad groups uh, where the ads are uh, repeated across the board, uh, it gives you that ability to sort of uh, group things that are the same together and mm -hmm. gain visibility rapidly across a large number rather than just looking at one ad group at a time, right? So in statistics, it's really important to have a lot of data. And if you're trying to test, you want to uh, and iterate rapidly to gain uh, some momentum. Uh, having that capability, I think it's key. So we'll, we'll see. But if this this is a super promising uh, platform. They're new uh, and uh, they're ready. I mean, they've been testing for a while. And now they're they're in the general availability. So it's it's ready. Anybody who wants to try it, I think you just go to. It's like uh, the word the word analysis, but replace the N with it, the adanalysis.com. And uh, yeah, anyway, so. The third uh, hack that we'll talk about is related to call tracking. So I'm sure uh, most of you are familiar with the benefits of call tracking, but for those who are not, just quickly a little intro. Uh, you know, in PPC, we track success uh, by using Google AdWords conversion tracking or Google Analytics or some third-party platform to, to gauge uh, how your sales are going and um, you know, PPC is driving sales and, and so forth. But in the world of uh, sort of local businesses, the goal is often more to drive uh, either foot traffic into the stores or uh, phone calls into a business that may be providing services. Um, so uh, there are many ways to track uh, phone calls uh, for PPC. As you may or may not know, Google now provides technology that allows you to do that uh, just for Google AdWords, right? But it's, it's great. So if that's, uh, you know, the only uh, sort of marketing effort you do is Google AdWords and you can leverage their product and it'll fix a lot of your problems. But if it's not, which is usually the case, there are, you know, probably a dozen mature call tracking companies in the U.S. alone and then there's a bunch uh, internationally as well um, who will provide you like technology that tracks phone calls and measures uh, how good they are and so forth. So not all, it's like in PPC when you're gathering leads, not all leads are the same, not all orders are the same size, same size, sorry. So it, it, it's the same for uh, when phone calls are coming in. Once you've passed that first hurdle of tracking the number of calls, right, I got one, I got three, I got five, uh, then there's the reality of the business owner that says, yeah, but all the calls that are coming in are uh, support calls or there are people trying to reach my employees or, you know, or they're uh, wrong numbers. So how do you gauge the quality uh, of, a, of a call? Um, well, there's several ways to do it. Uh, one of them is through sort of IVR processes. So once a call comes in, you know, I think we're familiar with dial one for sales, dial two for support. So at a first, first level, uh, some of the vendors of call tracking technology have these capabilities so that you're able to uh, not only have the number of calls, but to know that, hey, you know, I got 100 calls and 80, 80, of, 80 of the 100, 80% of my calls were for sales and 20% were for support, for example. So it gives you a better idea of how your ads are performing, which keywords and which ads are generating uh, sales calls right, rather than support calls. Um, there's another way that's becoming more and more prevalent. So as we know, you know, we use Siri and stuff like that. So uh, text to uh, speech to text technology is getting better and better. It's obviously not far from perfect, but um, there are technology providers who have uh, call tracking technology providers who have technology that analyzes the call, so they record it, they then decode it into text, and then you can have a series of keywords that you define that uh, you want to look for, um, which will be, uh, if, you know, if a call has that keyword, you can qualify the call as a sales call or as a valuable call or whatever you want, right? So you can score the call based on the words that are spoken during the call. And you can even do that by who spoke those words, right? Because it'll detect uh, who's the um, person who answered the phone, who, who initiated the call, and they're able to, to say, well, if the, the person who called is saying things like, uh, I don't know, credit card or something like that, maybe it's more valuable than if it's the other person who's saying it. In any case, uh, that, these technologies exist today. They're emerging. They've been around for a while, but I'd say the quality of decoding is getting good. And I know that for a fact that Invoca uh, is uh, one of the 
great call tracking uh, companies in the U.S. Uh, have that, and I know others have it as well. I'm just not 100% sure which ones, so I'm not going to name them. But you can, um, uh, we have like a, more than a dozen call tracking partners on our tech, on our platform. So uh, if some people are interested, you can go to our website and peruse them, and there's there's more detail there. In any case, uh, yeah, call duration is the, an obvious one as well. How long does the call last? That's the easy one. If the call lasts the six seconds, you know there's the wrong number <laughs> or a hang up. Uh, versus 10 minutes, right? A 10 minute call is, is really good. And so uh, another thing that's uh, interesting, I, I don't, I wouldn't call it necessarily a hack, but in terms of understanding what's going on, you can of course listen to the calls. Most if not all the technology providers in the call tracking uh, ecosystem provide you with that capability. Um, that's it. So number four, experiments. And uh, back to you, uh, Jeff. Great. So for many of you who have been through your AdWords account, you've probably seen this pop up on your screen in the campaign settings and probably said, wonder what that is. So this is called experiments. This allows you to run uh, very specific uh, campaign level tests where you can test you know, keywords, bids, or ad groups in your campaigns, and you're able to evaluate the, ex the experiment. So it's in beta now, but I believe it's going to be coming out of beta shortly. So, uh, you know, let's dive in and spend a couple minutes talking about experiments. Can you advance the slide, Mark? I think I did. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so Google Experiments, it's its a beta system for campaign level testing. Uh, you can actually test with a percentage of your auctions. So as, as opposed to exposing all of your traffic to a test, uh, um, you can test as little as five or 10% of your traffic, or if you want to test 100% uh, of your traffic, that's okay. And it really comes in handy if, if you're making, say, uh, a large change to your ad copy. Say you're changing, you know, a key benefit or a unique selling proposition, and you want to see how it goes, but you don't want to disrupt business too much. You could just sample off a small portion of the uh, traffic and see what your results are, and then roll it out across more and more of your traffic over time. Uh, Google is going to randomly choose which auctions to. Uh, to enter into the experiment, so they kind of have the control of that. And then the results automatically are compiled in the interface, and you'll be able to see the results of your, your test, and then you can make decisions on whether you want to take that experiment and then roll that out as part of your regular campaign. And then uh, the next couple slides, we're just going to show you what it looks like when an experiment is set up. So what we do is we just basically specify what we want our experiment to be and we decide what traffic uh, split that we want. For this example, I just used a 50-50 uh, control versus experiment. Uh, you don't have to enter a start date. Uh, you can control uh, your, your start and end dates manually, or I should say your start date manually, or if you want to enter a date in, that's fine. And then you can end the, the uh, experiment 30 days from the start, or you can customize uh, a date. Maybe you want your test to run 60, 90, or 120 days. Then once you click the Save button, uh, it'll advance onto the next screen that uh, Mark will pull up in a second. I think you have lag, Jeff. It's on. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it, there must be a delay on our end. Talking, it'll come up on your screen. Yeah. So on that following screen, if everyone else can see it, uh, all it is is um, all it is is uh, a, a summary screen of what the experiment looks like when it's uh, when the experiment is running. So it'll tell you start and end date. It'll tell you when experiments are modified. Uh, you know, it's just sort of a confirmation that I have an experiment and it is running. And then that's uh, pretty much everything about experiments. All right. So we'll, uh, thank you. That was great. There's, there's, there's some lag. I, I hope not everybody's experiencing that, but it looks good on our end. Uh, so let's, let's go to uh, another uh, poll question. 
how much automation do you use in your PPC campaigns today? Just a, a rapid, almost like a show of hands. I, uh, I, I do everything manually would be the first uh, setup. I know a lot of you are like that, uh, or I think so. I use some automation, but only when necessary. So uh, you know, experimenting with it. And some people have a lot of confidence in it, and they use it as much as possible. So just to see uh, how things split up, uh, please uh, yeah, give us your, uh, your answer. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, very hard-hitting material today, Mark. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff about call tracking is getting to be a lot more prevalent. Yeah, it's, uh, in fact, uh, the, the irrelevant of PPC, there's uh, uh, some of these businesses are lining up like uh, marketing automation tools that, that uh, some of us are familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, you know, they get the calls, they score them, they... Uh, they do a lot of things with that that data, and so for people who are call uh, intensive or call dominant, as uh, they call them, uh, you know that industry is evolving really rapidly. So, yeah, and you know marketing, uh, obviously, when you you spend money in advertising dollars, you want to track your success. So, it's important to keep track of what's going on there and to take advantage of it when it makes sense. Uh, exactly. So the the, uh, the next uh, next slide. Um, uh, uh, Mark, if I could just jump in for one second, I'll just read off the poll results now that uh, we've got. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure, as we've gotten the data in. 35% uh, of you uh, said that you like to be in full control and you're currently doing everything manually. 46% uh, of you, so just about half, are uh, using some level of automa automation, but only when it's absolutely necessary. And 20% of you are using automation as much as possible. All right, so number five. Uh, so, to become And that can take a year or more, you know. So, so um, uh, the idea is, uh, yes, you want to bring in your leads, your opportunities, your revenue. Uh, in this example from uh, Salesforce, you know, you can see Salesforce leads, you know, and so forth, and the revenue that's uh, attributable to those those opportunities and leads that were captured. So that's of course important, but that's I'd say the first level of automation is just to get that data back and to be able to optimize based on that information. But the real problem is in the length of the sales cycle, like I mentioned earlier. So in order to sort of, um, uh, how do we gain a proxy into the quality of a lead for B2B? Well, one of the ways that uh, some of our customers are using more and more is to use scores from marketing automation systems, you know, which are, uh, for those who don't know, marketing automation systems are um, uh, systems that allow you to monitor the well the behavior of people on your website or how they interact with your email and so forth right so someone comes on your website you may not know them they interact with the site they go look at your pricing and your offering and so forth but they look at some strategic pages and you're able to say well if they look at my pricing page I'll give them a score I'll, I'll add 50 points to their score for example but if they look at my job or my career section I'll remove some points right? so you're able to sort of use the scoring system to qualify a visitor to your site. And then eventually, when they fill out a form for you, that information gets uh, sort of compiled together, so the behavioral information as well as what they just entered in their form, and it gets entered into your CRM system. It creates a lead with a score, right? So that is a great way to qualify uh, as a proxy. Are the leads I'm getting qualified for me? Do I think they're going to turn into business? Are they looking at have the right information if they're interacting with us uh, or not. And so you're able to use that in so many ways because this data can be brought back into systems like, uh, well, like into a spreadsheet or to a bid management system, for example. Uh, and then we can use that information to make better decisions uh, in terms of how we're going to bid or how we're going to, uh, you know, uh, create 
maybe new campaigns to address new opportunities and so forth. And how that's done, uh, it's the same sort of method that's used for uh, any system like that, where, whether it's call tracking or a CRM system or even ad serving. The idea is that uh, people um, need to encode their URLs that go to all their ads. So there's systems like ours or like Marin or Kenshu or others that can do that, encrypt the ads, right, to pass uh, here like some kind of identifier for every click. So anytime somebody clicks, we know exactly what ad it was ad group, keyword, the context, everything comes through. And that information goes, uh, is captured by the, the form page where people enter their name and so forth. And behind the scenes, the ID is passed to uh, the CRM system, right? Uh, onto the thank you page and to the CRM system. They keep that information. So for everything that comes in, they know whether or not it was referred through search or, or display or whatever and which keywords or which placement. That information is kept on their side until something happens. Right? So every day, uh, systems like ours will go back and say, okay, did you have any leads today that had uh, some track ID you know, from, uh, from Aquizio or from, from Kenshu or Marin or, or whoever? And then uh, send me that list. And then we take that information and uh, simply map it back correctly to the, the right ad keyword campaign ad group. It's 100% accurate. And it's a, a great way uh, to sort of pass information between two systems like that. So capitalize on that all, all the time. And, you know, even if you're building an in-house system, that's the way to do it, is to have that ID for every ad and uh, to pass it along. So, uh, Jeff, I'll pass it back to you for hack number six. Great. So for hack number six, we're going to talk about automated rules. And automated rules are just... Uh, there are a set of uh, rules and alerts that you can set up. They're not quite as strong as, as scripts. So if you don't have that uh, Java developer on your hands or if you have a smaller account, uh, this is a great middle way to use to be able to uh, take some of that manual load off of you. So the first example that I provided is just a simple uh, send an email rule. So the uh, the requirement that I put in here is, you know, I want to know any uh, campaign that spent more than $200. So by defining this requirement, I'll get an email that gives me an alert that says, hey, you've spent more than $200 on this particular campaign. We can also add additional requirements onto that. Uh, maybe those campaigns didn't get any conversions or maybe they only got one conversion. So we can add whatever other requirements that are needed to have that alert be as relevant to you as needed, then you can set uh, a frequency, uh, once a day, uh, once an hour, once a week, whatever you need it to be. This next rule is just a, a simple rule for raising bids. Uh, sometimes we have to be aggressive and uh, for brand purposes and whatnot, and we have to keep uh, certain keywords at the top of the page for our uh, for our uh, keywords. So in, in this particular example, I just put a max bid of $100 and I just put in a requirement and I just made up a campaign name and said, if any of my campaigns are named live, I want to roll those bids up to the top of the page and make sure they stay up there all the time at the top of the page. And then on the other hand, I said, if any campaign has the name test, uh, I don't want to raise the bids. And again, we can use the same frequency, whether it's daily or whether it's hourly or weekly or, or whatnot. Uh, something that's very helpful, uh, you know, for bid management when you have to take some of those uh, basic type of actions. But lots of flexibility in this, these rules, too. Next slide. Okay. And then uh, finally, on this slide, uh, I set up a rule for actually pausing ads. Uh, we can set up uh, rules similar to, to the keywords where we say, if I got you know, a certain amount of clicks, say 100 clicks and no conversions, I want to pause those ads. Obviously, those ads aren't responding for whatever reason. We want to make sure that we're running the copy that's going to convert. So through automated rules, we can do that instead of manually having to cycle through every ad group and deciding which ads to pause. This will take care of it throughout that entire campaign. And just like the previous rules, you can set your frequency. So something I suggest uh, running in your account if you're not doing any automation, uh, it, it really does go a long way. It will make you more efficient. 
And that was all uh, for uh, for that. All right. Wow. So uh, hack number seven, Google Display Network. So, uh, you know, we, we've automated something. I'm going to show you something we've done here that to automate the process to discover good placements for, for a Google Display Network, which is uh, something that a lot of people do manually, but uh, of course the type of discipline that you need and attention you need to do this effectively is uh, uh, it's too hard to eat all that stuff, and then we'll you know, we provide a system that that's going to assist with keyword selection, URL placement, ad selection. We do it. Was we uh, we start by keyword list, very tightly themed. Uh, we recommend about 20 keywords. Uh, we tested different sizes. 20 keywords about the right size uh, of list, and the keywords need to be very very close uh, together. They need to be like. Uh, uh, variations of the same keyword, basically. Um, then uh, we'll uh, run these. Uh, well, what we do is we create uh, 40. Uh, let's just get back to this. We'll create uh, once you've created that that set of uh, of keywords. We'll uh, in an ad group. We'll replicate that uh, 40 times. So we'll have exactly the same setup 40 times over, where 10 of the 20 keywords are live uh, and 10 are not but it's random. So every ad group, they look the same, but it's not exactly the same keyword mix that you're going to have. And so uh, even though in theory Google states that uh, doing that would be futile, it's not true. The uh, difference between the best and the worst performing uh, ad is usually between 30 and 50 times uh, better <laughs> So in terms of volume of impressions and clicks. So it's not uh, futile at all. So, so that uh, is something that's automated, right? So replicating this complete, uh, 40 times and then running these. And then what we do is we listen to see uh, which placements are generating conversions or clicks. Um, and so you'll have situations where uh, a placement is generating a ton of conversions. We call these gushers. <laughs> so we take these and we exclude them from the ad group that's there and we'll move them into a new campaign that we'll create, uh, which will be a managed placement campaign. And where this URL, this is the page level URL, will now be managed individually because we know it's gold for us, right? So the process looks for those great placements and isolates them. It takes them out of auto placement and it puts them into a managed placement campaign where we can be much more uh, purposeful and granular in the way we handle it. Uh, and so the same thing goes for placements that are uh, not generating good results. So those are also excluded. And, uh, but that's the end of it. We just exclude them and keep them in a sort of a blacklist for this specific uh, account uh, or campaign where we're going to uh, not allow placement on this ever again. Uh, of course, ad selection, so having the ability to cycle through ads uh, rapidly is part of that system as well. And display, there is many, many ad formats. You know, there's the regular Google Display Network, and there's the mobile MGDN, mobile Google Display Network, and then there's, of course, uh, part of that MGDN is the uh, formerly known as AdMob <laughs> network of all the ads in apps, which are also part of this. So a great, great number of the ad formats and text ads, right? So we have to have a good variety of these running. And also, what do these ads say? What is the message, right? So all of these things need to be constantly sampled and tested, and, and they are. And then, of course, uh, managing bids and managing budget on these placements uh, to make sure that we allocate the money correctly and that uh, you know, we drive maximum results from uh, those uh, campaigns that are generating good results. So what we end up in the end is uh, giving people the ability to explore the Google Display Network in an intelligent way, structured way. Uh, and it works great, um, especially for companies for whom um, Basically, a lead is a lead. So there are some businesses that are like that, and typically they're uh, they're they're businesses that value emails a lot. Where building an email list is critical because that's usually where they drive the the sales from. 
So I'm thinking about uh, companies like, let's say, Gap.com or Sears or um, even uh, coupon companies like Groupon, for example, or Living Social. Their entire business revolves around having email addresses in a specific location and then sending offers to these people by email. So anybody whose business is like that uh, is every time super successful with a system like this. And now we'll go to number eight. Macros, back to you, Jeff. Great. For anyone in the audience today that's an Excel geek, uh, macros can be pretty much heaven for you. Uh, what macros do is they take really complex tasks and allows you to automate them through Microsoft Excel. So if you don't have a budget to purchase uh, software, uh, macros can be a, a good middle ground to be able to automate a lot of uh, tasks. Microsoft will tell you that there's none to minimal program experience required, but what we've learned in the real world that you really do need to understand the macro and some of the code to understand what it's trying to do. Otherwise, you can sort of get lost up in the macro and whatnot. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. So what I'm going to show on the next uh, couple slides is an example of a template that we use here at Hennepin. So what we can do is we can take our keyword level data, uh, we format it in a very specific way, and we load it up to a tab in an Excel spreadsheet, um, and it's just a, a bunch of raw data. So once we have it all loaded in and formatted, we basically just press a button, and then what the macro does is across a whole bunch of other tabs throughout the uh, spreadsheet, It'll give you an account summary, so we'll know some key things about the account from quality score to uh, traffic metrics to conversion data. Then automatically, we're also seeing the top 10 campaign performance. And then, Mark, if you can advance the slides. What happens also is simultaneously, match type performance is being uh, compiled. Uh, and then on the next slide, if Mark, if you can just advance one more time, you'll also see there's estimated performance by position. Now, you're only limited by your imagination with this. So you can pretty much off of that one data sheet, uh, you can get a hundred different looks if you wanted to. So you would just come up with the design of uh, what it is that you want to see, and then the macro and all the coding behind it will just run, and in the press of a button, you get all this data that if you had to pull this on manually, there's a good chance it would be outdated by the time you're able to pull this data and actually be able to analyze it all. So a great time saver allows you to look at uh, your data in a little bit of a different way and allows you to make some key decisions fairly quick. So, uh, you know, consider macros. Uh, there are some pre-made ones that are that are out there. So, uh, um, you, know, if, you know, I definitely encourage you to, to use that as a possibility. And I also provided some resources um, on how to write a macro just so you can start to get familiar. So if you go to WikiHow, uh, write a simple macro in ex Microsoft Excel or excelfunctions.net, writing Excel macros, uh, you'll start to get a basic understanding of what macros are and how they work and everything. So uh, hope you find that to be useful. That's amazing. That for macro? I think, uh, by the way, this, this is a, an opportunity for those of you who have that sort of programmer profile come PPC manager to uh, develop a resource to share some good macros with the rest of the community. Just saying. Um, all right. So the last hack is uh, more of a sort of a statement that I'm going to make that is something I'm observing. Uh, I, I know it's true in some respect, so some may disagree, but I think we're coming uh, over time, we're seeing more and more and more automation uh, sort of helping PPC managers do their work. But it's, it's come to a point where in some specific verticals or industries, it's, uh, companies are actually automating everything completely and just overseeing performance, making uh, the occasional change. But, uh, and and uh, there's two specific industries that are like that. I think retail, uh, we all know that it's becoming more and more automated. We saw the release of uh, shopping campaigns, which formerly known, aka uh, <laughs> uh, product listing ads. 
uh, keyword less, right? So there's uh, the requirement is to connect to a database and um, to set a budget. I mean, the, the, the amount of involvement is, is much more limited there. You're limited to trying to, to organize things correctly, clean up your feed, and even that, there are third parties that do an amazing job at doing all these things. So a lot, a lot of automation going on in retail. Uh, and then uh, the same thing's going on also in the local space where, uh, of course, you know, uh, local like SMBs don't typically handle this themselves. They, they deal with companies like Reach Local or YP.com or Yodel or who knows, like all of these guys are uh, built good sized businesses catering to SMBs by providing them with sort of a, a digital marketing package but you know they have hundreds of thousands of clients so obviously they can't spend a lot of time in doing keyword research experimenting one client at a time they need to automate everything and we're at a point where uh, they're pretty far down the path today using uh, templates and taxonomies business taxonomy so knowing that if I have uh, an, a divorce attorney, uh, all I need to know is where he's located and how much money he wants to spend. And then I already know which keywords work well, which kinds of ad copy work well, because they've been running this for you know thousands of divorce attorney across the United States already. So they have this knowledge built into like a, almost like a database. And they can, uh, on the, at the push of a button, deploy uh, a new account populated with campaigns, ad groups, keywords, the correct geo-targeting, um, you know, the right bids, uh, budget allocations not correctly. So there's more and more automation going on in specific sectors. And I'd say that uh, we'll be there soon where these sectors will be fully automated. It will be the norm. Um, and there will probably be more of them coming up uh, in specific verticals, like in the automotive sector real estate and so forth, where it's kind of the same reproducible pattern. And uh, final thought for me on that is that there's that that's maybe 50% uh, of all potential spend on PPC. And uh, I would say about the other 50% is uh, managed by businesses with substantial budgets, where creativity matters, attention to detail matters, you know, having human brains collaborating on an effort to improve results will always be there. So, you know, I don't think there's a, a threat to agencies or PPC managers. Far from it, um, you know. But just so you're aware, you know, these things are happening and uh, we'll see more and more of it. So automation is uh, it's, uh, gaining ground and not losing ground. Yeah, Mark, I uh, just wanted to make a point on that. You know, you bring up a good point that it, it's it's not going to be a threat. In fact, I think it it sort of strengthens all of us, It'll allow, you know, us who are sort of down in, in the weeds of PPC to be able to, uh, you know, really be a lot more strategic. So if we're spending yeah. our time on strategy and then taking that strategy and incorporating it into the automation to get the right, right outcomes, we're probably in the end providing more value to our clients and our organizations than we are, than we are now. So uh, I'm glad that you made that point. Yeah, I agree. Final live poll question. Um, so, Hennepin is uh, probably one of the, I think, one of the better PPC agencies in the US. They're easy to work with, great people, and they're offering everyone uh, a free solution blueprint where they'll look at your account and provide you analysis and consulting, uh, provided that you have a minimum of 20,000 spend per month. Um, so, I would encourage you uh, to have them look at your account they can help I'm sure of it and um, of course you know we're always happy to show you uh, a free uh, of course free demo and answer all the questions on our platform see if it's something that can help you if you're looking for a lot of automation you know I think we're uh, we're definitely someone you'd like to talk to so uh, I'll let you guys answer this and after that we're going to proceed to uh, Q&A I think we got a, a few questions that came in so uh, great Okay. All right. So should we proceed to Q&A? Yeah. 
Yeah, we're just uh, waiting a second more to see, uh, see how many questions come in. Oh, there's not a lot of questions. Well, well, well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are they coming in? I... Uh... Doesn't look that way. Someone was typing. Anyway, listen. Uh, I think I think we'll wrap it up. Uh, you know, um, if you guys have any questions after this, I see that uh, this is rare. Usually, there's a bunch. Uh, don't. I'll, I'll, I'll have a slide for you with contact information. Uh, no. No. Hold on. My screen went the wrong way. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Okay. So if you have questions, uh, you can contact uh, Hennepin directly, marketing at hennepin.com. Uh, or uh, if you want to contact Aquizio, just go to our website. Uh, there's an easy phone number and everything else. And uh, we'll be glad to, to answer uh, any or all of your questions. So uh, from uh, Hennepin and the people at Aquizio, thank you very much. And we'll see you at the next webinar. Thank you. Thanks for uh, joining us today, Mark. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Great. And thanks to everyone for uh, joining us, and we'll talk to you next time.